So now that we've introduced merchandise operations, let's look at the recording of the purchase of the inventory as well as the recording of the sale of the inventory. When we purchase inventory for sale, we normally will sell it using either cash or credit. So in other words, we will buy it for cash or we will recognize an accounts payable if we buy it on credit terms. Most businesses today use credit terms uh, in the acquisition of inventory. We record the purchase transaction into our accounting records when ownership changes hands between the seller and the buyer. Normally this occurs when we receive the product from the seller. Here is an example of what a purchase invoice may look like when we purchase inventory from a seller. Note that there is a listing of who the seller is, who the purchaser is, as well as the date of the transaction, the terms code, and the FOB terms. Also on this invoice would be a detailed listing of what are the items being purchased, the quantities, and the total cost. Here's an example to take a look uh, at the journal entry that needs to be made when we acquire inventory. This invoice that was prepared by PW Audio Supply invoices the buyer for the acquisition of inventory in the amount of $3,800. In following the cost principle, we would then recognize the purchase of the inventory at cost. Therefore, we would do a journal entry that would show a debit to inventory of $3,800 and a credit to accounts payable for $3,800. The inventory account is an asset account and the accounts payable account is a liability account. You may have noticed on the vendor invoice an FOB term. FOB standing for free on board tells the reader of the invoice who owns the inventory. FOB will tell us if the ownership changes at the point of shipment or at the point of destination. So if the FOB term is shipping point, the ownership of the inventory transfers to the buyer at the time of shipment of the inventory item. If it, the invoice says FOB destination, ownership changes hands at the time that the inventory is received by the buyer. The importance of this FOB terms also include that the freight cost is paid for by the owner of the inventory at the time of shipment. So FOB shipping point would require that the buyer pays for shipping. FOB destination would have the seller paying for shipping. So here's an example of the purchase of the inventory and how we would account for the freight. Assuming upon delivery of the goods on May 6, the buyer has to pay $150 for the freight charges. We would increase the inventory account by the $150 and we would credit cash. The reason for this is that we want to account for the cost of the inventory to include all additional costs to have the inventory in a saleable condition. So when we purchase inventory, we have to account for all costs to get the inventory to our location in a saleable condition. In the alternative situation, assuming that the freight terms of the invoice that we were looking at had the seller paying for the freight, the seller would have to pay for the freight and notice that we use the account, account called freight out. So we would debit freight out and credit cash. If the buyer had to pay for the shipping, 
the buyer would include the cost of shipping in the cost of the inventory. If the seller had to pay for shipping, the seller would be accounting for the cost of the shipping as a selling expense, and we call that selling expense freight out. Another thing to consider is what do we do if we have to return the product? Now most vendors will provide us two alternatives if we want to return a product. They will either return the product or they may provide an allowance or a reduction in the sales price so that the buyer will be satisfied with the purchase. A purchase return is very similar to what you may be familiar with when you find that you have a product that you don't want. You take it back to the store and that's a purchase return. A purchase allowance may be where the seller reduces the sales price to the buyer as an incentive for the buyer to keep the product and not return it. So here's an illustration. Assume the buyer returns the goods that cost $300 to the seller. We would then reduce the liability account, accounts payable by the $300 and we would reduce the inventory. In essence, the buyer no longer owes $300, so we reduce the liability account, but they also do not have any additional inventory, so we reduce the inventory account. Another item that we keep track of when it comes to purchases is purchase discounts. Now, pr purchase discounts is an incentive for the buyer to pay the invoice sooner rather than later. You may see in that example where you see 2 slash 10 comma n slash 30, otherwise read as 210 net 30. When you read a terms code such as this, we know that the invoice is due in 30 days from the date of the invoice. However, if the buyer was to pay the invoice within 10 days of the date of the invoice, the seller will grant a 2% discount on the invoice. Why do we do this? Both parties in this transaction benefit when the buyer takes advantage of the credit terms. The purchaser saves money by taking the 2% discount by paying early. The seller is happy to take a lesser amount from the buyer because they receive the cash sooner than having to wait until the end or until the due date of the invoice. So you might see these terms codes similar to what we see on the slide here. 210 net 30 denotes a 2% discount if the invoice is paid within 10 days. Otherwise, the invoice is due in 30 days from the date of the invoice. The second one, 110 EOM, stands for a 1% discount if paid within 10 days. Otherwise, the invoice is due at the end of the month. The third one is that the invoice is due in 10 days at which is at the end of the month. So here's another illustration. Assume the buyer pays the balance due $3,500, which is the gross amount of the invoice, less any returns that were made of the $300. On May 14th, the last day of the discount period, the buyer pays the invoice. Remember, the buyer owes $3,500, which is the original $3,800 purchase, less the amount that was returned. So when we pay the invoice early, we no longer owe the $3,500, so we debit accounts payable by that amount. Because of the discount of 2%, we don't have to pay $70 of that invoice. We essentially have to pay in cash 
$3,430. The difference of the discount of $70 is reduction of the cost of the inventory. If the buyer does not pay on the early terms, they are required to pay the entire amount of the amount due. So notice in this journal entry of debit accounts payable for $3,500 credit cash, we are paying the total amount of the invoice due. There is no discount. The question is, is why would we want to take a purchase discount? Really, if you look at it, 2% appears to be a relatively small number. However, you're really getting a 2% discount for paying 20 days early. So if I was to look at the 2% discount on $3,500 is $70. If I was to take $3,500 at 10% for 20 days, which would be $19.18. So in other words, if I went and borrowed the money at 10% interest, I would get nine, I'd have to pay nineteen eighteen in interest. The savings I would take would be $50.82. Now if I base the $50.82 savings, what I'm really looking at is I get an annual rate of savings of 36.5% if I take a 2% discount on a regular basis. So really, a 2% discount is a pretty good deal. So if I look at the inventory T account in our ledger, remember inventory is an asset. So when I purchase inventory, I would debit the $3,800. When I pay for the freight, I would debit the $150. When I return product, I'm reducing the cost of the inventory by $300. And when I take the purchase discount, I'm reducing the inventory by $70. Altogether, my net effect of my transactions is $3,580. Now, let's take a look at the sale. Now, PW Audio Supply is the seller. We look at the invoice the same in terms of that they need to recognize the sales revenue. So the sales revenue on this invoice is $3,800. We would need to make a journal entry of debiting cash or or accounts receivable, depending on whether we receive cash or we sold on credit, and we would credit the sales revenue account by the $3,800. If we were using the perpetual inventory system, we would also need to recognize the cost of goods sold, the cost of the sale, at the same time as the sale. Remember, in perpetual inventory, we must recognize cost of goods sold at the same time as the sales transaction. We ha what we have done is we have given up the inventory, so we reduce the asset, and we have to recognize the expense. So in this particular situation, with PW Audio Supply being the seller, when they sell the $3,800 on May 4th, they would have to debit accounts receivable for $3,800 and credit sales for $3,800. Assuming that the cost of the inventory was $2,400, we would have to debit cost of goods sold, credit inventory. When an item is returned from the buyer to the seller, the seller also needs to recognize that a return has occurred. The sales returns and allowance is the opposite of purchase returns and allowance. Sales returns and allowances are considered a contra revenue to the sales revenues account. Remember we use the term contra asset when we looked at depreciation. Contra meaning opposite. 
So when we are talking about recognize a contra revenue account, sales returns and allowances will reduce the sales revenue account, but not directly because we want to know what the total sales were as well as knowing what the returns were. So sales are not reduced. Instead, what we use is this contra revenue account to tell us how much we've had in returns. So, in the event of the $300 return, the seller has to debit sales returns and allowances, remember being a contra revenue account, so its normal balance would be a debit, and we would credit accounts receivable. The buyer no longer owes the $300 because of the return of the product. Also, because we're in a perpetual inventory method, we need to recognize that the $140 worth of inventory has come back to the seller. So inventory is increased by $140 and we reverse out the recognition of the expense cost of goods sold by doing a credit to cost of goods sold. Now assuming that the return goods were defective and had a scrap value of $50, what we would then do is make the entry of debit the sales returns and allowance for $300, credit accounts receivable for $300, but we would not recognize the $140 worth of value. We'd only recognize the value of the inventory returned at scrap. So we would debit inventory of $50, credit cost of goods sold for $50. The difference, the $90, would be ex continue to be expensed in the cost of goods sold. Also, if we were to allow a sales discount for offering an early payment by the buyer, we would also have a contra revenue account called sales discounts. Sales discounts would be contra to the sales revenue account as well, and we want to keep track of sales discounts separately than from the sales revenues because we want to see how effective we are in our collection process. In this illustration, the buyer pays the $3,500 on time or early and takes the $70 discount the seller receives $3,430 in cash but also allows for the $70 sales discount. So we would have to debit cash for $3,430, debit the sales discount for $70, and recognize that the customer no longer owes $3,500.